There are trophies to be won, successes there to claim. Some would give their very soul to reach Earth's highest plane. But to count it gain would be my loss if I lay down commitments cross. So I lift my eyes to things above and serve Him with a heart of love I just want to please the Lord be in his will in every way to be lost in his presence found in his likeness to hear him say it all been made sins die already cast the world was at my fingertips I had arrived at last but the cry could not be pacified from a heart about to break inside then Jesus showed himself to me and said just look what you could be say well done someday so I will bring my offering and lay it at his feet all I was and all I am and all I ever want to be I just want to please the Lord Say well done someday to be lost in his presence, found in his likeness, to hear him say well done. Welcome home, my faithful one. I want to hear him say well done someday. desire of every one of us is to be in his will. Thank you Miss Robin, Brother James, uh, Miss Amy for that great song. Let's stand together this morning if you would please and I want you to take your Bible on this homecoming Sunday 2017 and I want you to turn to the book of Philippians chapter number 3. Philippians chapter number 3. Uh, after the kind of preaching that we've had this week I feel like a donkey in the Kentucky Derby. I'll be honest with you. Boy, I tell you what, what preaching we enjoyed this week, Brother Mark. And boy, I don't know about you. I'm going to be honest. I think Friday night was probably one of the best sermons, messages I have ever heard. And uh, boy, I got so much help from that. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to forever remember that picture that I have. Uh, that someone took with all of our church staff, Sunday school teachers, music workers, everybody, that picture, and I saw all those people around me, and I got to thinking, thank God for God putting people in your life 
that can help you as you serve the Lord. Amen. And uh, what an awesome message that night. And I appreciate Brother Mark. He's my friend. But he sure helped us, didn't he? Amen. God helped us, but I'm glad God used Brother Mark to do that. Verse number uh, 13 of chapter number 3 of the book of Philippians. Verse number 13 of chapter 3. These are familiar verses, but I want to share some things God has on my heart with you. Uh, I guess this will be Miss Brenda. You help me. Is she still in here? I guess, is this my 15th homecoming? Oh, this will be 16th. October will be 16 years, right? Okay, so I'm going to eventually get to 15. Miss Wendy and I have been trying to get to her for the last two years, haven't we? So it's a 14th homecoming, 15th year in October, right? Okay, great. All right, now I know how long I've been. I feel better about it. All right, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Aren't you glad that you can move forward? And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now I want to use those verses just a moment to preach a little bit about Calvary Baptist Church's past, its present, and its future. But then what I really want to preach on today for a few moments is on this subject. How will you come home? How will you come home? As we think about a homecoming today, I begin to think about some homecomings in the Bible and how people came home in the Word of God. So I want to share a little bit of both of those today with the help of the Lord. Let's bow together and pray. And uh, I want to get uh, Brother Russ, if you would. If you would, preacher, just pray for me right there. Would you pray? Yes, God grant it. Yes, yes. Yes. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Uh, I want all of you to look up here at me. Stay with me a few moments tonight or today. As I preach the word of God, I want to share some things with you. And uh, for those of you that are part of this church, I, I certainly want to share a few things with you from those few verses that I read this morning. And as you think about those verses, and the Bible talks about uh, that we are to remember and forget and even deal with the present that we're living in, uh, I begin to think about and look around and think about where God has brought this church in the last years or many years uh, that God has had Calvary Baptist Church here. I begin to think about in these verses, you see here that you can remember the past. I think the past can be a good thing, not just a bad thing but certainly we can remember the past and where God has brought this church from. I've talked to Miss Brenda on several occasions and she's talked about uh, where this church was and I guess Miss Brenda you probably have been a part of this church am I saying 40 years would be correctly uh, correct and then Brother William I know you Miss Catherine and others I can mention have been in this ministry a lot of years. Uh, you remember what it's like when he was in the basement of the building over there with a Spanish his church offices are at and then moved upstairs and then when Dr. Carter was here moving in the new building there and then in these last 15 years God's allowed us to build this building and to remodel an office building and Lord willing as he allowed us to buy land and now looking forward one day to a new sanctuary and all God's doing but we ought to never forget where God brought us from. Paul said we ought to always uh, in other places in the word of God remember the past but also sometimes what he means by this he said we ought to forget the past you say preacher what does that mean listen all the failures all the things in our past we don't have to go back and dwell on those I'm glad we can forget those things and we can move on from those things and if you're here today and say preacher in my past I have failed the Lord listen guess what day's a new day 
Today's a brand new day and you don't have to you don't have to stay in remembering the failures of the past. Second of all, Paul says, not only do I forget those things which are behind, but reaching for those things which are before, Paul reminds us we are to be rejoicing in our present time. We ought to be rejoicing, not just remember the past, but rejoicing in our present time. And I want to say today, I have a whole lot to rejoice about. I have a whole lot to be excited about. I have a whole lot today that I can run. Listen, I don't have to look back to the past, or I don't even have to look into the future to rejoice today. I can rejoice because my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. And I can rejoice over that today. When I came in today and looked around, and I do it every homecoming, and I look around what God's done. I walked outside earlier today, and people were parking on the side of the road, parking in the field, people in Spanish church parking around the back side of the building. Just, I, I looked around today, and I began to rejoice in the present. I began to thank God for what God's doing. I know we talked the other night about writing some new books and God doing some new things. And I know we rejoice over what God did. And I'm glad I can read books in the past of what God did. But I want to tell you right now, I can rejoice right now over what God is doing right now in this present time. Has God been good to you? Say amen. You have anything to rejoice about today? Say amen. Then I want to say this, not only do you see in these verses we can remember the past and rejoice in the present, but the Bible tells us we can reach for the prize. I'm glad, thank God, one day I'll stand before my Lord and one day I'll be able to bow down at His feet and I want to have those sheaves to lay before Him. I want to hear Him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want Him to know how much I love Him and I want to serve Him. And one day, friend, I won't read about Jesus anymore or I won't have to pray to Him when I don't see it. But I'm glad there is coming a day where the prize will be here. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And we can, listen, we can reach for that prize. I don't know about you, friend, but I'm looking forward to that, that that is incorruptible. That that I can lay before the Son of God. So when we think about a homecoming, Calvary Baptist Church, let's remember the past. God's been good. God's been good. Brother William, you remember this church when there was more people in the choir today than the whole church had in the church. You remember, Brother William, when there was times uh, uh, meeting out a little building where you'd be glad to have one piano player. Now there's probably seven, eight, or nine piano players. You remember a time when we didn't have a lot of the things we have. Doesn't mean they weren't good days. They were good days. They were the starting days. They were the days. But, man, look what God has done. Don't ever forget where God's brought you from. Amen. Amen. Don't ever forget where God's brought you from. Remember the past. But then we ought to rejoice right now. I got a lot to rejoice about. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you. God's been good to me. Did you look at them little youngins of yours before you came to church today? Did you look at that wife of yours before you came to church today? Amen. Did you come to church today and get to teach to those young people today? Get to serve God today? Get to lead the music day? Got that pretty little wife now getting ready to have eight or nine kids of your own? I mean, when you think about all of that, man, you get to rejoicing in the present. Friend, I'm not going to wait till I get to heaven to shout. I'm not going to wait till I get to heaven to praise God. I got a whole lot to shout about and a whole lot to praise Him about and a whole lot to worship. Right now, I'm just rejoicing in the present. Praise God, I got this morning low humidity, beautiful sunny day. I thought, God, we got them tents set up to eat, and it ain't going to be 102, 97% humidity, little breeze blowing through. I was pushing chairs out there today and struggling a little bit till Brother Bill grabbed the end of it then I act like I was pushing and he was doing all the work but I was doing that today and I was thinking about boy just a while back I broke these ribs and my lung was punctured I couldn't do a whole lot and today I could go out there and do all that I'm rejoicing in the present right now I look over my sweet little Laverne and Shirley sitting over there and I think about that and I think about all of you that God sent this way and what God's doing in your life 
and your children. I look at these babies coming in here and know they don't have, hallelujah, they don't have to grow up in a church that's dead and dry and nobody cares about God. I'm glad they get to grow up somewhere where the Lord's around and God's around. Your grandbabies get to get in the glory and they don't have to wait till tomorrow to do it, but they can do it right now. So if you don't mind, I'm going to rejoice in the present. Amen. Then thank God, I'm certainly reaching for that prize. Because you know what? I have people come by me a whole lot. Preach, I mean, I had so many of y'all text me this week. Preacher, thank you for bringing the men in here. You do. Thank you for having this meeting. Thank you for praying about who to get. And I'll be honest with you. When you go to this pulpit in this church, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want anybody here that don't have the burden we have and don't want to see God do so. I'm not interested in somebody filling up their schedule or filling up a church meeting. I want somebody to come in here and give us some help and give us what we need. And boy, didn't we get that help. Uh, guess what? But as good as it is for you to text me, that's great. Or for you to say thank you. But buddy, I'm looking for one day, uh, hallelujah, Brother Barry, uh, when the Lord Himself uh, uh, will be rewarded with that prize. Amen. Amen. I can almost stop there. I'm not going to. So don't you get too encouraged. Amen. You got to admit one thing now. I do preach shorter, Brother Mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He preaches eight sermons in one time. He told me, he said, that pulpit's got way too many rabbits in it. Amen. Right? We can listen. I think about homecoming, how we can just uh, remember, rejoice, and reach for those things. But then I got to thinking in the Word of God about some people that went home. When you think about a homecoming, I, I go back to Burlington occasionally now visit my mom and my brothers, and Burlington is growing. I don't know if any of you know about Burlington, North Carolina, but it is growing unbelievably how much it's growing. And every time I go back, it don't even seem much like home. I never thought I'd say the Statesville seems like home. Brother Derma and I talked about that. Uh, listen, and I don't mean bad about that, but you know, well, you've had a home in your life, all your life where you grew up, and you moved somewhere else, and when you move somewhere else, it takes a while. But I'll be honest with you, when I go back down there now, it really doesn't feel like home like this does. And, and I mean, when White's Mill Road starts feeling like home, you know you don't got the will of God for your life. Amen. My life wouldn't be the same if I didn't bump across them railroad tracks. Amen. Hallelujah, I like it. But I got to thinking in the Word of God about how some people came home. And I want to share a few with you. And I won't get you to turn to each one. I have cheat notes. I can get there a lot quicker than you do. But I, I want to share with you how some people in the Bible came home. The first one I think about when I think about somebody coming home, I think about the son that came home broken. I think about the son that came home broken. The Bible talks about it. You know where it's at in Luke 15 and how this young man came home. And the Bible said, And the son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. I think about the son that came home broken. He was broken for different reasons, but he still came home broken. And can I say this? Can I say this? Brokenness can be a good thing and a bad thing. I want you to understand sometimes we can get broken because we've done things and we're sorry like this young man was and disappointed because he had let his father down. I, literally a picture of letting God down and he had done all these things wrong and he was broken and friend I'll be honest with you I've come in church before like that where I felt like I let the Lord down and I didn't do everything God wanted me to do and I come in broken in my life and here's a son that came home broken. But brokenness can also be a good thing. The Bible says a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. When we come to God's house and we're broken and we want God to do something in our life and we say, Lord, I'm broken. I want you to use my life and do something in my life. Friends, some of the sweetest times in my life is when God broke me down and God let me see myself for who I am and let me see Him for who He is and God broke me in my life. I watched some of y'all this week as God broke you during that meeting. Boy, God broke your heart during that meeting. Broke your heart over who you are. Broke your heart over what you want to do. Broke your heart in things in your life. Thank God for brokenness. This son came home broken. Some people say, well, he did all in bad things. Yeah, but he came home. And I, I want to say this as I pass today. If you're in this auditorium today and you've drifted from the Lord, maybe not physically, but you've drifted from the Lord and spirits in your life, 
I just want to say this today. All you got to do is get that broken and contrite heart and say, Lord, I want to come home. Amen. You know what I'm glad? I, I'm glad he'll welcome you home. I, I love that old song we used to sing many times in the invitation. Lord, I'm coming home. I'm glad I've got a place to go home to. Aren't you glad for those of you who are part of this church? Aren't you glad you've got a place to come home to? Aren't you glad you can come in here and nobody's going to throw rocks at you and nobody's going to kick you while you're down? Friend, we'll do everything we can if you'll come in with a broken heart and a contrite heart and you come in and say, Lord, I need some help. I'm glad God can give us that help. Amen. Amen. First of all, there's a son that came home broken. Second of all, I began to think about somewhere else in the Word of God. I began to think about a sojourner that came home bitter. A sojourner that came home bitter. I'm talking about a lady by the name of Naomi. Her husband, Elimelech, took his family and they walked away from the will of God. They left the house of bread. They walked away from the things of God. Eventually, Naomi comes home. She doesn't come home with her boys. She doesn't come home with her husband. She's lost about everything in her life. But she comes home only with a little lady by the name of Ruth. And of course we know the story of Ruth and the kinsman redeemer of Boaz and the picture of Christ in all of that. But I want you to listen. Naomi, when she came home, somebody looked out when they saw her coming. They looked out when they saw her coming and they made the statement. Somebody said, is that Naomi? And you remember what she said? I'll quote it to you in the word of God. Here's what she said. She said, call me not Naomi. She said, call me Mara, for the Almighty have dealt very bitterly with me. I want you to listen. Are you listening? She said, I went out full, and the Lord have brought me home again empty. She came back bitter. She came back bitter. She came back. The word Mara means bitter. Literally, she had got away from God, not really in her own doing. She followed her husband who didn't follow God and lost everything, Brother Brandon. And then she comes back and they said, is that, you know why they said, is that Naomi? They were questioning. You know why? Because she was so messed up from the world they didn't even hardly recognize who she was. She said, call me not Naomi, call me Mara. For the Lord have dealt bitterly me. Can I say this? She came home bitter. Can I tell you this? If you get away from God, if you walk away from the Lord, if you get in your life and you get upset at people or you get your mind on people or you feel like people let you down, friend, there's a lot of people that come home and they come home bitter. And not just bitter in the sense that I'm bitter at people, but it's just put a bitter taste in their mouth because of where their life is at. But guess what? I'm glad even if you come home bitter, God make you sweet again. Amen. Every now and then when I get up in the morning, I, I, I fix my coffee, you know, my Keurig diet, fix the coffee, and I get up, and sometimes I forget whether or not I put a sweet and low or Splenda in it. You know, and I'm one of those people, you know, I, I mean, I don't, black, just plain old black coffee, I'm just not going to do that. I got to have something in it. But anyway, I listen, but you know when you take a taste of that, don't, it, it don't take long for you to know whether or not you put it in it. Amen. Especially if it's the first one, the first cup. But you turn that thing up and you think, my soul. And I'll be hollering, when did you put anything in that coffee? You know why? Because it's bitter. But guess what? I can reach over there in that little bowl and I can open up that little pack and I can put that pack in there and all of a sudden that which was bitter becomes sweet. Amen. Guess what? You can walk in church. Somebody's getting some help. I feel it. You can walk in church and have a little bit of bitterness and wonder what in the world's going on in your life and does God really care? And you think, man, what's going to happen? And God opens up a pack of sweetness and pours it in your soul. You can come home home bitter but God can make you sweet amen I think about a son that came home broken and a sojourner that came home bitter then I want to say thirdly I think about a sinner that came home bragging Mark chapter number 5 good passage of the word of God Mark chapter number 5 the Bible talks about that maniac out in them tombs, foaming at the mouth, cutting himself, 
His life was a mess. Like some of us. I said his life was a mess. Like some of us. Jesus met him out there in the country of the Gadarenes. That old boy got right with God. The Bible said when you saw him the next time, he was clothed, sitting in his right mind. He was sitting in his right mind. Do you know what he wanted to do after Jesus touched him? He wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to go with Jesus. I mean, buddy, listen. If you've been foaming at the mouth, cutting yourselves with knives, uh, everybody afraid of you, uh, your life was a mess, you was full of the devil, uh, and somebody came, my Lord, that does sound like us, amen? Uh, I may have not cut myself, I may have not foamed in the mouth, uh, but I was an unwretched, I was a wretched sinner, uh, lost without God, and Jesus came by my way. Watch this. He said, Lord, I just want to go with you. Howbeit Jesus in Mark 5 suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to the friends, to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. I'm talking about how you go home. I'm talking about how you go home. There was a son that went home broken. There was a woman, a sojourner, that went home bitter. But here, listen now, you got a sinner that goes home bragging. But he ain't bragging on himself. He don't, Lord have mercy, I'm about to have church now, help me out, you help me out now. Hey, I want you to watch this. He didn't go home and say, oh, look what I've become. He didn't go home and say, I look a whole lot better now. He didn't come home and say, look what I'm not doing. He didn't have to tell anybody anyway. If you knew him before and you know him now, you know something that happened in his life. And so he went home and he began to brag on Jesus. Can I tell you something? Anything we are or we ever hope to be, we owe it all to Him. We owe it all to Him. I want to tell you, I owe everything to Him. I owe everything to Him. It's not about me. It's not what I am. Hey, listen, I can put on the suit, but He puts on the righteousness. You understand that? It's all about Him. It's all, hey, you know why you are what you are right now? Because one day you pass my grace, and one day you pass my mercy, and God changed your life. And friend, you can brag. I don't know about you, but somebody today ought to brag on the Lord. We ought to brag on the Lord today. Amen. Calvary Baptist Church, we ought to brag on him. Boy, hadn't God been good? Hadn't God been good? I said, hadn't God been good? Hallelujah. Well, I will say first of all, there's a son came home broken. Sojourner came home bitter. There's a sinner came home bragging. And then over in Acts chapter 7, a fellow by the name of Stephen, there's a servant that came home from the battle. I want you to watch this. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 7, Stephen looked at that crowd and began to tell them, you ain't living right, you ain't doing right, you're not right. They took up stones. They began to stone him. He said, well, that don't sound like, that don't sound like a good day. Oh, it was a good day for him. It hurt, but it was a good day. Because you've got to understand that finally, when Stephen was getting ready, the Bible said, give up the ghost. He's getting ready to die because of his stand for Christ. The Bible says he looked up into heaven. And he saw Jesus back in the back not paying attention. He amened early, didn't he? And he saw Jesus standing in the back, not paying attention. And he saw, looked up into heaven, there was nobody there. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible said he looked up into heaven. And he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Can I tell you this? That is so significant. You say, preacher, why is that significant? Because the high priest, according to the Bible, the high priest went in and out every year and never sat down. But the Bible said when Jesus presented his blood on the mercy seat, he sat down and he sat there because he said, tell us time, it is finished. There's no need to get up. But guess what? When a saint of God, when a servant of God has come out of the battle, has come out of the fire. Jesus don't take it sitting down. Amen. He don't take it sitting down, but he stands up. Brother Bill, 
I know you're a Bible student and love that word of God. But you'll find this when the high priest stands up. He don't have no blood to offer because it was good one time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen now. Am I telling it right, Miss Joyce? He don't have no blood to offer. And there ain't nothing he's got. Why is he standing up? Because one of his children been through the battle. <laughs> oh listen if you ain't never been with a saint of God that's getting ready to leave this world and cancer got a hold of them or they had been through the battle and they getting ready to cross on to the other side and then mercy walks in and grace walks in and the sweetness of God shows up I believe when old Timmy would only be the Lord 16 years old I believe when he looked up and he's getting ready to go home I believe the son of God stood up and said Son, well done. Welcome home. I'm glad for the homecoming. That just, listen, Jesus don't take it sitting down. Right. Amen. 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 Boy, I think about one day. Think about this. The Son of God will stand up and welcome me home. Amen. 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 I can see him tell angels, hold on a minute. Here comes Chris. <laughs> hold on a minute. Here comes he. Amen. They've been through the battle. Smoke's cleared. They're coming home. Amen. Jesus said, we ain't going to take this setting down. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, I think about Brother Keith Cudd yesterday at that funeral, 51 years old. Brother Keith, sweet man. Sweet man was on the board with us in Macedonia. Pastor church, sweet man, sweet family. His wife still works in Macedonia uh, doing things for us there. And boy, I think about, I think about when he went home, Jesus didn't take it sitting down. Oh, he didn't take it sitting down. He stood up. I want to ask you a question. How are you going home? How are you going home? How did you come home to homecoming today? Did you come in here today broken? Something in your life? You say, preacher, listen, we've smiled today, we've laughed today, we've done a few dumb things today. Have fun. We're going to have fun. We dressed up kind of funny looking today. But I'm going to tell you this, and all sisters inside, there's some of you in here today, and your life's broken. There's people, number this size of people, there's people walked in here, and there's some broken folk here today. Your home might be broken. Relationship might be broken. You might have a broken relationship with other parts of your family. You might have something just broken in your life, and you're sitting here today just broken. Well, I got news for you. It's a good place to come home to when you're broken. It's a good place to come home to when you're broken. There may be somebody in here bitter. Now listen, I'm going to tell you this. Don't get bitter at God. Because right. I'm going to tell you what happens if you get bitter at God. You get bitter at God, it will, it will, it will alienate, alienate you. It will push you so far. Don't get bitter at God. Amen. Friend, God's been better than you than you deserve. Amen. I, don't care, I don't care what any of us go through. I don't care what any of us go through. God's been better. God has been so much better than any of us deserve. Amen. And I just want to say this to you today. Don't, get, don't come in church bitter. Don't, don't, don't get bitter. Just, just let God make you better. Amen. Amen. I choose to live my life better, not bitter. I choose to get up every day, listen to the birds sing, enjoy that sunshine, go another day, say, God, make me better today. I don't want to be bitter. Amen. When I came to this church today, when I came to this church today, I had some reasons to be a little bit discouraged. My wife will tell you. You know, we do everything we can for a solid week of revival, for homecoming. We try to give everybody the best things we can give them. And there are some people, they don't appreciate it. I know that. And if you ain't careful sometimes, you get to focusing on the people that don't appreciate things. But I got news for you. I look around here today, and there's a whole lot of people that do appreciate God, Amen. appreciate the things of God. And I tell you what, I got far more blessings that outweigh any other thing. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Hey, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I want to make sure I don't ever come home bitter. Miss Glenda, I thought about, I thought about, and I walked by Brother Freeman. Every, every morning I walked by that corner building, and I walked by Brother Freeman out there with his vest on. There was two men standing out there with their vest on. I think about it. One of them was Brother Freeman. He's still out there. And that was Brother Tommy. Your husband's in heaven. If there was ever a man that was sweet, precious, if there was ever a man that deserved, I believe, I personally believe, all the good things. But you know, I don't remember Miss Glenda the whole time he battled that cancer. I don't think he ever got bitter. He never got mad at God. 
Matter of fact, when God took him home, he went home in the glory. He's with the Lord. Now I tell you what, it's one thing to say you do that, but until you get there, you don't know how you do. But I want to make sure that I don't ever come home bitter. Well, preacher, somebody mistreated me, so what? Well, preacher, I had somebody let me down. It's life. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Don't be the sojourner coming home bitter. Well, that church didn't care nothing about me when I got out. Well, the reason they didn't care nothing about you when you got out, you just thought they didn't care nothing about you. Somebody praying for you. Right? Then I think about this old sinner that came home bragging. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever brag on him? Do you ever get around anybody? Does anybody listen to me today? Do you ever get around him and say to anybody, let me tell you what Jesus did for me? People tell me all the time, preacher, I don't know how to witness somebody. It's easy. You ain't got to quote 47 verses. You, you don't have to know the theological setup of the Bible, eschatology. But you do know one thing. You do know what you were. And you know what you are. You know where you've been and you know where you're going and you know how you're getting there. Can I say this? There may be somebody in this building right now and Jesus wants to save you and change your life just like he did Brother Mike back there. Just like he did. Uh, and what was, what was uh, that young lady's name? Kimberly got saved from California, 20 years old. She got saved, gloriously saved. I believe she really got it, buddy, I'm telling you. But I'm going to tell you this. There's somebody else like that in this building today probably. Jesus passing by. You say, preacher, it's homecoming. It is, but I'm going to tell you what. Greatest homecoming hadn't come yet. But the Lord is coming. And I'm going home to the homecoming. You say, preacher, will we eat? You can believe it. Amen. But the Lord himself. Will serve the table. Amen. Some of you serving God, don't forget one day. The servant of God, the servants of God, will get to that heavenly reward. Jesus will stand and welcome you home. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Amen. We celebrate in the 50s today. Some of you remember living in that time. Some of you here today, born before that time. I was born in 64, a little farther down the road. I guess it'd be somewhere, would that have been probably the beginning of the Vietnam War, somewhere around that or close in those dates, or somewhere around that. It ended in what, 70 or something. But I think about all of you Today, we kind of put this on, you kind of grinning because you're like, huh, I lived that era. I remember what it was like to get in the 57 Chevrolet. I remember what it was like to go down and the girl come out on the skates. Miss Wendy Day, and I wouldn't let her do it. She wanted to get her some skates and go skating around with that little outfit on. I said, baby, you'll break your neck. But I'm going to tell you this, some of you remember that. Now, a lot of years down the road, 2017, Every kind of electronic we need. Technically advanced, like unbelievable. But you think about it. Look how far God's brought you. My mama told me the other day, my mom's 92. And she, you know, she told me, she'll tell me every time I talk to her, don't mean people make it to 100. Don't mean people make it to 100. And I said, well, you're right. Not a lot. But uh, anyway, She'll get talking about it. She said, don't worry about it. It's all right because I know I'm going, I'm going to see Jesus. And I'm going to see him. And, and I'm glad she is. I'm still praying for the rapture first, but I'm glad she is. But I want to say this. There's a generation that are finishing the battle. I thought about this, and Brother William may outlive me. Brother William up here on the platform the other night, we had that special service Friday. Over 50-some years, 
And I don't know, Brother William, I guess a deacon in this church close to that time. That's a whole lot of serving God, ain't it? But one day when Brother William goes home, like Brother Roy went home, Brother Roy went home saying, happy, happy, happy. Jesus be standing on the right hand of God. Welcome me home. Let's stand our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. How will you go home? I want to ask you a question today. Everybody look at me just a moment. I want to ask you a question. What if the Lord were to call you home today? Let's just make it real. Since it's homecoming, let's make it real pleasant. What if the rapture happened today? Forget the casket, forget the graveyard, forget the funeral. Let's just say, what if Jesus come today? What a man alive. You say, who would, you say, preacher, who would eat all that food out there? Who would care? Because, buddy, we're going to be feasting on something better. And if it's Pam, I'd like to get a piece of that cake on the way by, but who cares? But don't you listen to me. If we were to go home today, how would you go home? How would you go home? Would you go home today broken? Would you go home today bitter? Would you go home today bragging on being saved or do you not even know if you are saved? Would you go home today like Stephen did from the battle with Jesus standing saying, well done?